then people say, oh, ah, Qing Wen, uh, Zhonghua Lu Zai Nali Ya. And you're like, okay, here's the directions. And they're like, huh, oh, you don't look like Taiwanese. And then sometimes you go to pay your taxes and stuff. And people are like, uh, you know, this is the foreign accountant for the tax office, like the tax office in Kaohsiung, right? I'm like, I'm a foreigner, but like, no, you look like Inzumi, right? Like Ta Aboriginal Taiwanese. I'm like, oh, oh, I'm twice, sorry. Staying in Taiwan is, is, is a good idea for you? I mean, I, I was enjoying Taiwan, I was enjoying teaching. Um, the relationship stuff was unfortunate, but I had like a support network around in Taiwan. So I was like, yep, I could go back to South Africa, but I didn't want to because of, of lots of bad things of, of, that I felt at that time. Again, other South African people might feel differently about growing up in South Africa. So I was like, yep, stay in Taiwan. Let's, let's keep going. In the end, you, you look happy, so it worked yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, it, it did work out. I, was, I, I am pretty happy now. Things have changed quite a lot. How do you compare Korea to Taiwan? Taiwan is, is way better in terms of food choice and variety. Like uh, when I was living in Korea and, and teaching, like almost every lunchtime people eat gimbap, which is like the Korean version of sushi, right? Or they have like a, Pai Gu Fan, right? I don't even know what is the Korean word or the English word mm -hmm. anymore, but yeah, lived in Taiwan too long. Um, <laughs> so that's basically what people eat like all the time. And then people had like pizza occasionally, but like in Taiwan, there's such a greater variety of food from like noodles and rice and sui jian bao and so much of choice. You can go everywhere and buy different things. So it's, yeah, Taiwan has a better choice of food. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, sometimes it's a problem because you have too many choices. Yes, know? yes, exactly. Like I, I sit sometimes on my phone and I'm like, okay. What are you gonna eat today? What am I gonna eat today? We eat a food panda and you spend 20 minutes thinking because <laughs> it's so convenient. Yeah. I've been here 14 years. You definitely must have some funny stories. Oh God, so many funny stories. Like I think uh, after my Chinese got better, um, what, I, what used to happen to me all the time is, is, is riding a motorcycle like a, a lot of foreigners do. You're at the stoplight and sometimes people don't know directions and people look at you and you have like a big full face helmet and you have your mask on like recently, right? And people say, oh, ah, Qingwen, uh, Zhonghua Lu Zai Nali Ya? And you're like, okay, here's the directions. And they're like, huh, you don't look like Taiwanese. I'm like, oh. Yeah, I'm not, I'm a foreigner. I'm like, oh, oh, I'm twice, sorry. And then sometimes you go to pay your taxes and stuff and people are like, uh, you know, this is the foreign accountant for the tax office, like the tax office in Kaohsiung, right? I'm like, I'm a foreigner. But like, no, you look like Inzumi, right? Like Ta Aboriginal Taiwanese. And because, you know, if you've been in Taiwan for some time, Aboriginal Taiwanese people have very similar, like Polynesian Indian features yeah, yeah, yeah. of large eyes and, and like brownish skin and stuff. Actually, yesterday I, I was uh, taking a tram uh, in Garbsha and you know there was a there was a like an older lady next to me, but she was like I don't know ten meters away, and I was sitting on a bench on the other side. But she seemed a little troubled how to use it. You know, I don't know if she used it often or not, and. You know, so I'm basically sitting there and like waiting for the tram and she's coming, you know, all the way and then she sees me. First she was like, like a hopeful face and maybe she found somebody who can help her, but then she looks at my face <laughs> and, and like the hope is gone. <laughs> so, but I know she wants to ask me something, so I like, and like, shout you, shout you, oh, wait, song when, can you can't wait, shout, oh, oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> then she just asked, you know, when is the tram coming and like how to pay for that. So your favorite food? is oh my, my favorite food easily is a uh, sui jian bao there's an indian food that my mom only made one time at least i can remember when i was growing up in south africa it's called paratha which is like a, yeah, yeah. a pastry filled with like curry and lettuce and other mm -hmm. sort of vegetables and in taiwan sui jian bao was like a, an equivalent of that which is uh like gaoli thai and pork like, like cabbage and pork together inside a bun and usually with some chili sauce oh it is delicious Lots of people are actually telling me that one of the best ways of improving your Chinese is finding a Taiwanese girlfriend who doesn't speak English. What do you think about this? That is true. Like I, I went to Kaohsiung, which is the University of Kaohsiung, to study mm. Chinese for like six months. Like some foreigners do that, and it was really good, and I improved a lot. But uh, when I met my current wife, um, and and we met on OK Cupid, I believe. That time she was living in Xinchu, and I went there, and we had like a first meal together. And the first meal was like no English. I'm like, hmm, strange. Okay, sure. Because on OK Cupid, she just typed English. Okay. And she can type, and I'm like, hmm, that's strange. It's like, okay, 
since we're starting dating, I gotta let you know, no more English forever. I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then that was seven years, eight years ago. This feels like a long time. Um, and then, yeah, it's never been English since then. And um, lots of difficulties. Like when we argue, sometimes she'll give me the solid treatment. And then the longest time has been three months of just no talking. Three meals. months without talking. Yeah, yeah, eating meals together and just like doing stuff like we'll do the stuff is like hey um, i need you to change money in the bank from us dollars to Taiwanese dollars so we can pay our bills this month and she'll do that and and but we'll just never talk about anything meaningful we'll watch tv we'll eat lunch together we'll, we'll go for a walk outside and not say a single word <laughs> during those silent treatments so you, you've been telling me you really enjoy taiwanese food don't you yes I have a bad habit, like since I was a kid, right? Like when I enjoy something, I'll, I like to eat a lot of it, right? And that, that's been something, like I remember my first year I moved to Taiwan, um, I didn't have a motorcycle, and uh, there was a lunchbox store close to my house, like a Biantang store, and the only thing I ate uh, twice a day for a, a year was Pai uh, Biantang, and that's literally all I ate. I, I've had that habit when I find something new, um, like we are talking about, before the show was like, oh, I, I really love Kung Pao chicken and it's hard to find it like that, a, a store that's regularly stocking it. But mm -hmm. when I found like some really good Kung Pao chicken, I go there and they'll always say, oh, after like a week of like, oh, Jin Tian Kung Pao Chi Ma, like, yes. And then the next week, Kung Pao Chi Ma, yes. And they're like, okay. And then they see me stop my motorcycle. Oh, Kung Pao Chi Ting Shin Ni Hao. Oh, Jin Tian Yang Ma. Yang. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, 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 I'm like, yes, no, no, thank you. Oh, today, oh, we're the shen yu bian dan zhen de hao zi. No, thank you. I'm not sure how to do it. I'm not sure how to do it. Never.